I'm extremely gratified to see that we had a positive outcome today. As you all know, this had been a long road to justice. And I'm so happy that finally we are able to see this day. And no one would have imagined that four years ago, it was almost four years ago when we were standing in this building, that just two days before he was about to be executed, there was a stay of execution. Numerous constitutional challenges have been filed in court, but all of them were negative, with, you know, were met with negative outcomes. Finally, today, we saw a positive outcome. And during this four years of struggle, there were a lot of uh, reservations about the manner in which myself and some of the anti-death penalty activists were continuing with this fight. And people were saying that, why give this false hope after all, he's going to die, given the fact that the courts have turned down our applications. However, we see today that there is always a hope that in our struggle for justice, like Yong Wee Kong's case, and finally, despite the accusations, hope has spoken. What I mean by hope has spoken that there is finally hope in, in terms of the struggle that we have gone through. And uh, I'm also happy that uh, during this process that the constitutional challenges had one impact, that it highlighted the defects in the mandatory death sentence regime and that finally the law had been amended and that we have seen this positive outcome. Thank you, Mr. Rajan. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are very relieved, yeah, and happy that uh, this case has come to a uh, different turning, uh, either for in terms of law and also for the family and also for Wikong. It is very stressful because it has dragged on for more than four years for him and uh, we are at least we are seeing a different um, a life um, um, destination for Wicom and uh, for this I think he is a uh, very um, I think overwhelmed yeah overwhelmed by the uh, by the uh, sentencing uh, in a way that uh, the life is not spared yeah and uh, hopefully that we will be able to see in the society for other young people or for women who are not easily being dragged into this sort of drug mill. Chong Chun Ying, who is now facing death sentence, okay. and uh, he has, we have been also uh, campaigning for him quite in the last few years as well. And uh, unfortunately, the state has not given him the certificate of cooperation, so he faces death sentence anytime soon. So I'll be launching a constitutional challenge, even challenging the current change in the law itself as not uh, satisfactory, or rather it's unsafe to convict uh, his son. Uh, you know, his name is Chong Chun uh, In, uh, from Malaysia. He was 21 years old when he was uh, caught for trafficking drugs. He thought he was carrying gold, but unfortunately, gold, gold bar, and unfortunately, it turned out to be uh, drugs. And uh, it was so unfortunate. The guy is very naive, much worse than Yong Wee Kong's uh, case. And we have been campaigning across Malaysia as well. He comes from Johor Bahru. Maybe you can have some word with him later. And uh, so, whilst we are celebrating Yong Wee Kong's victory today, um, we also we are also very concerned with uh, the outcome of uh, Chong Chun Ning because he has not got a certificate of cooperation like Yong Wee Kong. So the struggle has to, the struggle will be much more complex, and um, you know that we have to face this.